finish this up, let it go out, bring my geometry in. Probably there. Let's go over. I do this all the time. Let's close it out. It doesn't like it to be open in both places. So let's let's go through that process one more time. Probably won't hurt anyway just to, to see some of those things again. I'll see if I can point out a, a few different things as well. But we'll go to Option, Import, Open. I call this UIE, User Idiot Error. Um, but anyway, we'll get back in. It'll probably save my um, my layer options. We'll give it a second to see. Yep, kept uh, maintain those layer options. Everything is preset. Uh, here's where I can save the configuration. I can also choose different templates if I want. So interesting things you can do there. But we'll give it a second to to re re bring that stuff in. You know, there are a couple things that I may not really want. Um, I probably don't want that geometry and then from here uh, I'm going to create a base view so you'll notice fact up so this is let me back up just a little bit so once we have this geometry in here I'm going to cancel that for a minute I can I can just come in and start extruding this but what if I want to be able to position these views in a way that it makes it easy for me to transition from 2D to 3D? So out on labs we have a tool, it's called the 2D to 3D tool, and it allows you to, to place these views in a way that makes sense. Um, this is something that we've just updated by the time you, you download this. It should be up to date for Inventor 2011. But we can go into the base view, and kind of the workflow here is you pick the view that you want to project your, your base view on, and then choose a geometry. So I just choose a geometry that I want on there. You'll notice that it moves it over. And then I have a projected view that I can come in and select both the bottom and the right view. And I can hit OK. And so now it's just positioning these views around. And I'm going to turn off some of these things that I don't really want. But let's just rotate around and look at my model. We can see what that looks like. Well, from here, I can just use regular operations to start extruding. So I can say, let's extrude that um, the other direction, and I'm going to extrude it to that back point back there. Looks like I missed a few things, so let's just pick those two pieces. There we go. And accept that. I also can do an extrude from here, and I'm going to change it to an intersect. And I can dynamically drag that along. You can see how it gives me a nice preview. That's some of the 2011 capabilities. But you could do this in 2010. You just wouldn't get quite the, the same previews. But we're going to do through all. So I'm using the, my intersect command to be able to, to do that. And then I also have some geometry on the bottom. I've got a slot that I want to remove uh, and some chamfered corner, you know, some chamfered edges. So we'll do an intersect with that. And you'll notice I can just drag that up or tell it to go through all. So in getting each of those three views positioned correctly in three different extrusions I'm able to say you know add my let's just roll this up get my first view that looked like that and then extrude my second view as an intersect which so I extruded back first and then the the side over and cut out this arc and the holes and the slots and then the last one cut out this slot and then chamfered the edges. So pretty quick and easy for me to uh, to do that all from that DWG file. So hopefully this was beneficial. Hopefully you're able to see some of the cool things you can do to get DWG data from Inventor to AutoCAD and vice versa. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed episode 42. Thank you much.